Hey everybody, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and I'm doing something a little different today. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take you on a thrift haul shopping trip with me. So right now, um, we're leaving Philly, uh, heading over the uh, Ben Franklin Bridge uh, into New Jersey. New Jersey, I'm a New Jersey native, uh, born and raised there, uh, but my home is in Central City, Philadelphia. And uh, this is the great Delaware River, which uh, I grew up in a part of New Jersey, very close to the river, not too far, of course, from the Jersey Shore. No matter where you live in Jersey, you can always get to the Jersey Shore pretty quickly. And uh, we're going to stop at two spots, one in Camden and then another one in a place called um, Woodbury. So thanks for joining me. And let's see if we can find some great stuff. So that is what you call a big dirty pile of snow. And this is what happens when they plow, when they scrape the parking lots and things, we get these big mounds of snow. Sometimes they're still sitting there in April because it just takes a humongous time for them to melt. We are on the, the tawdry Admiral Wilson Boulevard in Camden. And I know it doesn't look like much. There's a sneaker outlet over there. We're not going to go to that. But the store we're going to is right on the other side of that mound of snow. And it's called Village Thrift. So as soon as this light turns green, we'll be on our way. Okay. So uh, here we are pulling into the Village Thrift. And um, this is kind of a hit or miss place. I never really know, oops, I don't want anybody to actually get mad at me filming them, so let me try to be a little... All right, there it is, Village Thrift, kind of scary looking. And uh, you can see over there, they do 50% off every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. So today is Monday, and we'll see what colors we can get on half price. All right, let's head inside. So this is really pretty stuff and um, it's actually French Limoges but if you look closely it says it was made exclusively for Gimbel Brothers. Gimbel Brothers was a famous Philadelphia department store that is no longer in existence. So it's really high quality Limoges but since it was made for a Philadelphia department store that has been closed for 30 years I don't know how widely you would find this outside of this area so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna take a picture of it and do some research and maybe it'll be here next time. I'm not finding much. Oh, I do wanna show you something. So, um, okay, so here's the difference between Corning Ware's Blue Flower and the pattern made by Fire King. You'll, not you'll notice that they look a lot alike, quite a bit alike, but this is Corning Ware, and this one is Fire King. I'm still not finding anything. Okay, so guess what I found? Nothing. I have nothing to show you. I found absolutely nothing. The first time I take my audience on a thrift haul with me and I find nothing, keeping it real. You know, some days you come home with a busload and other days you come home with nothing. But don't get discouraged. We're leaving this shop in Camden and we're heading to another shop in Jersey. But actually, I did buy one thing. I cannot resist going over to the CD section and I did pick up great German military marches. So we're gonna turn up Unter dem Doppeladler, also known as Under the Double Eagle, and off we go. Ja, raus, schnell! <laughs> so I'm gonna let you see a little bit of sort of what everybody else in the country thinks of when they think of Jersey, the Turnpike, highways, I guess, um, densely populated old towns, urban sprawl, industrialization. Yeah, okay, so that is part of Jersey, but they're also absolutely beautiful places in New Jersey. I tell you, if I take you there, you feel like you're in a beautiful little New England village somewhere. So Jersey is a state of 
of contrasts. Uh, we just left Cam well, we're still in Camden, but we're leaving Camden now. We're still on the Admiral Wilson Boulevard, heading south into Woodbury. And uh, we're just gonna let you hear some German music and look at some of the scenery here. Uh, not a whole lot to look at, but enjoy. Okay, we're at a stoplight here and I'm laughing because this march that's playing, I absolutely remember playing this in high school marching band. I was a brass player and I can't remember the name of it. I'm not going to look at it while I'm driving. We're still in Jersey. Enjoy the Jersey countryside. Driving through uh, a typical main street in one of these old towns here in South Jersey. This particular town, uh, we're actually headed to the thrift shop, which is about half a mile from here. So we're almost there. But I thought I'd give you, uh, you know, a little something to look at. Some scenery. Some scenery. <laughs> We, uh, we actually had some more snow last night, but it didn't really amount to anything. That that, uh, that storm headed up to New England, and luckily uh, we didn't get bombed with it. And as you can see, the ro everything is clear here. The only thing that's left are piles of snow in certain places. So uh, here we are in mid-March, and, and so hopefully we're at the end of the snowy season. We certainly can continue to get snow this time of year, but hopefully most of it is over. exciting I know I'm excited so I am just about to pull into the Goodwill here in this town in Jersey I'm not gonna take you inside because it is very small in there and very well the parking lot looks slammed so it's gonna be crowded and I really don't like getting in people's way and filming while I'm you know in a store so I'm not gonna do that but hopefully when I come back to my car I'll have some really cool stuff to show you so I hope you stay tuned Okay, well, I'm back. I will turn the German March music down. Uh, <laughs> that was not a great shopping moment for me. I didn't find much. I found a couple of things and I will show them to you once I park. So I went to two places today and the first place was a total bomb. I found nothing. The second, pl oh, look over my shoulder. I guess for you, it's my left shoulder. There's some great old Second Empire Victorian houses on this side. I sort of had the camera cocked so that you can, or angled so that you can see the scenery. You don't have to look at my face. Uh, anyway, so I'm on my way to my quote unquote storage unit where I really wasn't planning on thrifting today. I was just gonna drive over because I have several things I need to pack and get shipped. And that's what I'm on my w Oh no. Is this road closed? I think they're just fiddling with something. Anyway. So, but if there's thrift shops on the way, I will stop. Yes, I stopped at two. The first one, there was nothing. The second one that I did not film in, um, 
I picked up a couple of things, nothing fantastic, and as I said, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. And I am going to go ahead and post this, and I'll probably give a disclaimer, you know, that yes, I went thrifting today, didn't find much, but that happens, and it looks like they're putting in some new utility poles over here, as you can see. Uh, that does happen. You go out and you bomb, you just don't find anything. Uh, the, that doesn't discourage me, but the important thing to keep in mind when that happens is even though you've got money in your pocket, don't settle and just buy junk simply because you say, you know, I've got to buy something because I'm here. Uh, I used to do that, and I really don't do that anymore because I don't want to take home junk. So I'm okay with walking out of a store and not buying anything. I don't like to do it, but it happens. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being goofy. Uh, but I like that march. I think it's called the Entrance of the Gladiator, uh, but I didn't realize it was uh, by a German composer. So uh, one thing that did happen while I was in the thrift shop, and I, I'll just talk about this for a second, since you're watching, <laughs> I haven't lost you yet. Uh, I did receive an offer on some items that are in my store for sale. They are six Hazel Atlas butterscotch spaghetti string salad bowls. They're not rare. They're cool. They are from that late 50s, early 60s era. Probably more early 60s. Uh, they're in perfect condition clean have a great 60s look and I'm selling the six of them for $29.99 with a option to make me an offer so someone made me an offer and the offer was 10 bucks uh, <laughs> there is good and bad with when, when folks I think make offers because you, you do run the risk of sort of maybe offending the person I really don't get offended. Uh, hey, it's there. You can make the offer. Uh, I put the option there, so I have to be willing to entertain an offer. You also have the option of responding to that person with a counter offer. So there's no way I was going to take 10 bucks. I don't mark my stuff up that high. Uh, but it would be worthless for me to sell these things for $10 when I'm asking 30 and I know I can get. 20 to 25 dollars for them so I could have written back and said here's my counter offer but they came in so low so low they came in so far under my price I just hit decline and I didn't even you know just decline nope I'm not gonna send you a counter offer because you know if you're gonna come at me and offer me 10 bucks listen if I make a counter offer of 25 you're gonna come back at 12 you know I, i'm not going to do that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in nickel and dime but you see if the person had come at me and maybe said a 20 dollar offer that's not terribly outrageous it's below the 30 that i'm asking but i might have accepted that 20 dollar offer or i might have come back and said how about you know 24.99 We'll see if we can meet somewhere in, in between that that but coming in at 10 bucks no so okay I'm out of the car and I'm now in the spot where I do a lot of my packing and where I store a lot of my items uh, so I'm gonna show you the couple of things that I picked up at that second stop that I made and then show you the things that I actually have to pack up today I had a viewer ask me if I would do a packing video which I won't do today but I do promise I'll do that I'll kind of show you how I wrap glass and get it shipped I've been shipping for a long time and I'm pretty good at packing I think I'm complimenting myself I've never actually had any glass break so um, I would be happy to show you that in another video but let me show you what I got today uh, again, not much. That stuff over there is just some of the stuff that I have in storage. Um, things that I bought a long time ago and are currently for sale in the shop. But this is what I picked up today. These two little lampshades, 
I was attracted to them because they look old. They have an old-fashioned look to them, uh, and finding and uh, finding, finding old matching lampshades in good shape is is pretty hard to come by. These aren't old. They're in fact they're they're new. They actually still have the maker's tag still on them. They were two ninety nine. I guess I guess they were two ninety nine two ninety nine each. Um, but I bought the two. I bought both of the shades for one dollar. They were packaged together and they're just little clip-on shades. You can see they're not parchment. It's actually almost like a plasticky type material. But I do a lot of vintage lighting and I'm doing a lot more vintage lighting. I, I come up, I sell little dresser lamps a lot. And I think what I'm going to do with these is use these for display purposes only. So when I'm taking pictures of my antique lighting, my little dresser lamps, I'll put these on there just to kind of show people what they look like with a vintage style shade. And I can always advertise the piece as selling it without the shades. There are new shades. If you want the shades, you know, it's like an extra like $9.99 or something like that. So but those are kind of cool and retro looking. I bought three other things. This really nifty pair of 19, I'm going to say these are 19, they look very 1930s to me. It, you've seen old sneakers from the 30s. They, they usually have this circle over here. They're not, I didn't really look to see if these are marked anywhere on the inside. They might be. Um, obviously, no one would wear these old leather ice skates. And if they date to the 30s, which I think they do, they're really just a decorator item. But what a cool thing to decorate with. In the winter time, you could lean these up against a fireplace or, you know, in your entrance entryway near your front door, really anything that you want to do with them. But they just have a great worn old look. And those were three bucks for that pair of, uh, I'll say 1930s ice skates. And this is, I promise you, the last of the anniversary stuff I'm not going to keep explaining what I'm doing. You can go back and look at one of my old videos if you want. But 25th anniversary, this one was $1. There are no chips on it at all. And it's got that silver overlay on it. So that's the last of the anniversary glass. And we'll see what happens with that. This is really nice. I can tell from my years of doing this that this fireplace set really dates to circa 1930. Uh, so this is the plate that would go on the wall and I need to do a little restoration to the finish which is not a big deal and you can see the price back here they actually wrote on there a dollar ninety one so this would hang on the wall this is a really really neat um, hammered look of effect to the uh, metal which almost looks if you look down here really nice copper and I don't think this is a patina. I think it's actually the metal itself. I don't see a maker's mark on these anywhere. Kind of an arts and crafts look too. So there's the uh, fireplace, uh, the coal shovel and the poker and the, the brush, which has seen better days, haven't we all? Um, so I'll just quickly pan around a little bit. This is an old set of ping pong tables where where I work. I'm actually in a basement, as you can see. Um, that's some of my 60s stuff over there, which uh, I'm taking with me to when I do the Brooklyn Flea. I'm going to be taking all my mid-century stuff with me that I don't want to, that I don't wish to ship. So I have a variety of some priority mail boxes some just cardboard boxes, some peanuts when I need them. Uh, this is what I was trying to think of, bubble mailers. Um, I do pick up used boxes when I can find them because packing material is expensive and I try to recycle whenever I can. More boxes over here. Uh, so this is where I do a lot of my packing. And here's some more old Christmas stuff that I haven't listed yet. These are really cool. And uh, again, most of that stuff is already listed online. I have two uh, original 
not repros. They do make a lot of repros. I do a lot with radios too, and I'm gonna do a video about antique radios. Things to look for, things to do, things not to do when you find them. I know the light's not very good. I haven't posted those yet. Uh, so that's sort of a tour of my... Oh, and over here is an area where... This is the stuff that I think... These are... Well, they're not bombs, but they're things that I really don't want to take the time to list because they just don't bring enough money. And some of, the th some of these things I've already shown you... Uh, you know, like... I don't really want to spend the time to list that Hazel Atlas jelly pot, jelly jar, because you can go online and find 15 of them at any given time. And, um, you know, what is it going to sell for? Five or six dollars. So this, some of these things, again, these are things I hold on to and just take with me to flea markets where uh, I don't have to worry about selling them online. That's that table right there. All right, so I'm going to get packing. And I'll be back real soon. Okay, so guess what? I am packing and I am going to show you something. Uh, here's a big box. And down inside of this box, I have those two tall, clear glass 1940s dresser lamps. If you want to see them, they're in a thrift haul video and a guess what sold on eBay video. But I want to show you um, sort of a common mistake that people make. Uh, the lamps are down under there. Uh, there's another protective piece of cardboard over top of them. They're packed in bubble wrap and they're deep down inside of this box. That might look pretty good, right? All right, let's close the lid. And I'm trying to do this while holding the camera. All right, not too bad. But if I press on this top, there is, you can see that I'm able to actually push my hand down and push in on that lid. That's not good. If I were to pick this up and shake it, there's still a little bit of movement in there. So again, not good. I'm gonna open this box back up and I'm gonna add to it. Now let me show you here. I often drive around, here's a little hint. Now I don't like to use nasty, you know, recycled boxes that say, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or Wal or you know, Walgreens. I don't have anything against those stores, but I'm saying it doesn't look very professional to be using a, a recycled box. I'll use them if I'm going to double box, but not for the actual shipping box. I will, however, use recycled packing materials. And so one of the things I will often do is drive behind a strip mall or behind department stores or grocery stores or furniture stores and just kind of do a quick drive-by. Um, I found, oh, I, I don't know how much, how many pieces of this styrofoam, but I found just dozens and dozens of pieces of this. And yep, I pulled over, broke the pieces, put them in my trunk. This makes great filler. It's free, it's lightweight. And uh, again, I am recycling. This would have all been in a landfill. It may still one day wind up in a landfill, but right now I'm recycling it and didn't cost me anything. So just a hint, if you're selling and you're always looking for things, that's one way you can sometimes find packing material. Uh, furniture stores, electronic shops, not really grocery stores, but some of the big box stores, you'll find this kind of uh, packing material in their parking lots. So I'm gonna be breaking this into uh, pieces and uh, putting some of the pieces across the top like this. See, so that when I push my lid down, it's completely protected. And you know, I'll tell you what, what do they say? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I would rather take my time and pack it well. It is a pain in the neck. So I'm told if things wind up broken and you have to do the insurance claim. So pack well and ship well. All right. Okay, it is all boxed up and shipped out. And I'm heading back into Philly now, getting ready to drive over the Ben Franklin Bridge once I pay the $5 toll. And then I'll be back in Philadelphia. So leaving Jersey, heading back into Philly. I think I'll turn the camera around and give you the view of crossing the Delaware River over the Ben Franklin Bridge back into Philadelphia.
back on the Ben Franklin Bridge now, crossing the Delaware into Philadelphia. And, uh, this is one of the few bridges left in America that you can drive over in your car, you can actually walk over, or you can take a train across. There is an elevated walking uh, track on this bridge, and there's also a uh, train. The Jersey trains, uh, they come across into Philadelphia and then go underground, so it's a subway when it gets over into Philly. But it's uh, an above ground train when it's in Jersey. And this bridge, I think, opened up in 1926, I want to say. So there's Philly over there. I don't know how well you can see the city. So in Philly, we're on uh, 46th Street, crossing underneath the Market Street uh, L train, elevated train. We're over here in West Philadelphia, and I'll give you a little view of some of the row houses here in West Philly. Yep, I haven't given up yet. I'm going to find you a treasure. I really am. All right, so destined not to give up. Yes, this is not for the faint-hearted. We're still out here, and um, I'm gonna find something in the wild. I really am. But you know, um, I just stopped at another place, and I had a moment in there, and it really wasn't very nice. I had to sort of change my mind, um, and it actually worked out for me. So you know, you ever get to a place, and somebody, you know this person got there 10 minutes before you, and you look down at their cart, you know, you just get there, and you look down at their cart, and it's full of just great stuff, and you go, argh, argh, you know? Why didn't I get here 10 minutes early? And so I saw this woman, and she had this great big marigold ruffled edged carnival glass bowl, She's big, like a console bowl. Wait a minute, yeah, I'm fine. I have to watch, because I'm back in West Philly now, and you can drive on the trolley tracks, but the trolleys go very slowly. So if a tr you just have to watch, and I'm on a trolley track, so I've got to watch what I'm doing. So I really shouldn't be filming, but um, anyway. So I was like, Argh! and she had, um, what else did she have? Um, she had like a 1930s Art Deco teapot. Uh, she had some other, I mean, I knew she was thrift haul, you know, maybe she was a reseller, I don't know. But I found myself like, Arr. I wish like, you know, she would twist her ankle and her cart would spill and I would get all her stuff. And then I said, you know what? Straighten up, because that's not how you should think. Good for her, you know? Good job, she picked out some great stuff. Um, and I was gonna actually go over to her and say, hey, you've got some good stuff. Doggone it, I wish I got here 10 minutes before you. You know, so that I wouldn't just be in a bad mood. But um, I couldn't really get to her. She got ahead of me and then I started shopping. Anyway, long story short, after I got over my cart envy, I actually found some good stuff. And it's in the back there. You can't see it. Um, I'll show it to you later. But I ended up getting some good stuff. And then it turns out she was right in front of me. I lost track of her, but then she was right in front of me when we went to check out. Um, and she was kind of looking at my stuff and I was looking at her stuff. And we kind of smiled at each other. And, you know, I said, yeah, you got some good stuff. And she said, so did you. So, you know, it turned out well. Um, there's plenty of vintage stuff to go around for all of us to have sort of, you know, a piece of the cake. And uh, so I did kind of fix my mind and I got rid of my negative thoughts. I did not want her to twist her ankle and spill her cart. But you know, that first feeling you get when it's like, I could have had that. So anyway, we're back in West Philadelphia. It's getting late, so I need to make, there's some of the old row houses over there that there are just, oops, can you see? I'm gonna make one more stop at a place called Circle Thrift on 45th Street. 
between Market Chestnut Walnut, between Walnut and Locust, I think. Well, not that it matters to you, unless you come to Philadelphia, then you know where I go. Uh, so maybe I'll film inside of that. But anyway, I just wanted to share my little moment with you as I was ranting and raving about not getting the great stuff. Uh, but then I did get some good stuff. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna keep filming a little bit because I want you to see some of the great big old... <clears throat> We're in the part of the city that was developed in the Victorian era. And of course, as the city moved out from its center, uh, it went from old, you know, the old colonial Philadelphia to more of these Victorian style row homes, which are what you see out here in West Philadelphia. Uh, as you move towards the towards old city Philly, the buildings are, of course, 18th century, 19th century, and a lot of these buildings here are Victorian era. And here comes one of the trolleys, but we're gonna hook a left here on 45th Street. And nope, I have to stop at this traffic light, and so that's what I'll do. Okay, turning on to uh, 45th Street, and I have to go several blocks here to get where I'm going, but um, I'll let you kind of have a little bit of the view. We're in an area uh, just west of what's called University City, where Drexel is, the University of Penn, um, and several other of the colleges that are here in Philadelphia. So if you like old architecture, old city architecture, you, you can see some of the cool buildings, some of the old apartment houses. All right, so we're coming up on, yes, I can go through here. And just think, every one of those kitchens has a Pyrex nesting bowl set in it, waiting for it to be cleaned out and for me to find it. All right, let's see if my little 20 minute parking spot is here. It is here. So we're gonna whip on in. By the way, I am like the king of parallel parking, uh, but I can just get into that one really easily. Now, I don't know if you can see, but over there is, how do I do this? Uh, that is the, uh, it's called the Second Mile Center Thrift Shop, and that's where we're headed. So let's go inside and find a treasure. Well, there is a better uh, view of the store, and I'll zoom in on it. Uh, Second Mile Thrift Store in uh, on 40, 45th Street. But anyway, I can't film in there because they just jam out. They rock the music, and it's so loud that I would get kicked off for copyright infringement because of the music but here's what I got nothing outstanding but I always find something in there by the way that's the store where I bought my 1850s Meissen snuff box for four dollars and sold it for 160 so I love that place all right so um, a pack of napkins for 10 cents they're kind of retro looking and they do say Hallmark on the back um, they're completely you know they look clean and new uh, so I'll put them away for Christmas for next year. Um, I really liked this sign. Uh, it's a wooden sign for an apartment. It was 25 cents and I think it might date to the 1960s. Uh, glossy paint, just really cool. I'm not sure what I'll do with that. I'll probably, probably try to sell it, but it was 25 cents. So kind of neat. This right here is, it looks like it's from the 50s and this would be sort of just a cheap kitchen thing um it says onions and i guess you would pull the lid off and stick an onion in there uh there's a little air hole back here so air can get in and this little onion dude was a dollar 91 and i don't see any chips on him he's not marked 
But um, he's kind of cool. And again, I think he dates to probably the, the 60s. You know, one of those kitsch, kitschy kitchen things. And then a really neat industrial uh, electric light that is missing one screw and a wing nut, which I'm going to be able to right there, but I can replace that. It has a really cool, um, why can I, not hammered, uh, not hammered aluminum, because this isn't aluminum, but look, machine turned kind of a finish. Uh, I date this to the 60s. I did take the rubber band off and it works, it it, you know, the spring works well. That was four four dollars three ninety three, uh, and it. This is where it would go down into a t a metal bracket that would actually hold it in place. That wasn't there, but I do have something at home that I picked up, and I think it will work. I think it's you bolt it onto a table, and then this piece will slide right down in, and it'll hold this. So. Uh, and if not, I'll still figure something out. But cool piece from the 60s. And that sort of industrial lighting is really in. All right. Well, thanks for tagging along with me on this uh, thrift haul. It wasn't very eventful, but I do have some things on the back seat that I'll be unpacking and I'll be showing you in my next Guess What I Found video. So until then, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying happy thrifting, thanks for watching, and so long for now.